The Site Shed Podcast is made possible because of Tradie Web Guys, creators of beautiful websites designed specifically for tradies and contractors. If you're tired of dealing with web designers that have no idea about your industry, then head across to tradiewebguys.com.au and reach out. Like many companies from all over the place, you'll be very glad you did. This is episode 102 of the SiteShed Podcast. You're joining us for part two of the How to Grow Your Business with Online Marketing series with Will Wang from Growth Labs. This episode is named The Three Key Pillars to Online Marketing Success. And make sure you tune in to take advantage of the awesome offer that Will has thrown out there for you listeners. Giving tradies and contractors around the globe the tools to run a modern business. You're listening to Toolbox Talks from the Site Shed. Now here's your host, Matt Jones. Hello listeners, welcome back to Toolbox Talks on the Site Shed. You're joining us today for part two of the three-part series named How to Grow Your Business with Online Marketing. I am joined with my co-host for this series, Mr. Will Wang from Growth Labs. Will, welcome back. Great to be back. Mate, awesome first episode. We were speaking about why you need to be marketing online. For anyone that missed that, go back and check it out. Will just threw a massive attractive lead magnet out there for you guys. He's basically offered to build out a Facebook campaign for anyone that calls in. The caveat there is, of course, I have asked for an iTunes review. So if you haven't left that, then you're not getting it. (laughs) Yeah, so go leave the review. It could end well, it could end badly, but it should be a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, mate, we're coming back here for episode two. And, and in this episode, we're talking about the three key pillars to online marketing success. Um, and this is obviously something that I suppose you've, um, you've refined over the years. Let's tell me why have you decided to speak about this? Yeah, so I've decided to speak about this because of the amount of tradies um, that I've come across who have wasted thousands and thousands of dollars trying to market online and not getting any kind of result. So you know, there's nothing more frustrating than than thinking that something's going to work and then just pumping so much money into it and getting that massive bill up then for ten thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars, and not getting anything in return. Yeah, I've got to say, Will. Obviously, we we deal with a lot in the digital space, and this is probably one of the number one. I won't say complaints, but this is like a very common experience for a lot of business owners out there. They just, they've just they been fleeced online or they've just lost so much money. Or you hear the story of people that run their own campaigns and not done it properly. And <laughs> Anyway, so I'm actually really happy we're talking about this because I think it is very relevant to most, if not all of our audience. Awesome. And so we're pretty much, as you just mentioned, then this is basically directed, I suppose, at anybody that has potentially either run the campaigns in the past or is looking at running campaigns in the future. Basically, this is totally relevant. You're giving us, I suppose, the three core fundamental elements in in your experience of what is 100% necessary in order to make these campaigns succeed. Yeah, exactly. So so there's three points or three key pillars that that you need in every single campaign for it to be successful. But before we even dive into that, there's actually two two points that I wanted to talk about. And these are the two must not do things. You know, these are the things that mistakes that I've seen people make time and time again that have just cost them an absolute motto. When we look at marketing, more importantly than you know, looking at how do we get a, a successful campaign, what we tend to look at is how do we minimize or reduce the risk to make sure that we're not just throwing money away for nothing. Yep. So the two things, look, if, if you're going to run your own campaign or even if you've got someone stepping in to run a campaign for you, the number or the, the two things that you really, really need to make sure you've got nailed down to cover your own bums is one, you need to have a budget set. So there was a kitchen making, making company based in the US that, that I dealt with and they had a really inexperienced work experience as a, a person come in and try and run a campaign for them. And this kid forgot to set a limit on, on the campaign. And, and not only that is when, when they went onto Google and they got asked, you know, how much money do you want to run, run each day for it? Instead of thinking that, that it was a hard limit, the kid thought, well, I'm going to put in $50 or I'm going to put in $200 over the course of the entire campaign. So he thought it was a lifetime budget, which means at $200, Google caps you off and your ads don't show. What the kid actually did was he set that as a daily budget. So as you can imagine, instead of getting a bill for $200 at the end of the month, that started getting really expensive real quick, right? Jesus. And unfortunately, the accounts department didn't catch on to that. So by the time they actually discovered what they had done, they were up for about $18,000. Oh my God. So it was a massively expensive, expensive mistake. 
So before you run any kind of campaign, do make sure that you set a limit on how much money you're willing to risk to see how, what resources you can get and make sure that's set and you've got it set at the right level. I'd just like to say as well for the listeners out there, as important as it is to understand how these campaigns run, it's equally as important, in my opinion, to get a professional to run these campaigns for you. So understanding them is one thing, but running them is pretty much a full-time job. I mean, it's why people like yourselves have, you know, do what you do because you guys can do it and you can optimize and you can reduce that risk so much more. So be careful if you're going to start running your own campaigns, people. <laughs> <laughs> Look, that, that, that is a great point. And, and just on top of that point as well, when you're choosing someone to run your campaign, ask them about their experience. Just make sure that they've got experience with, with tradies or, or kind of dealing with trades because marketing for different industries can look very different. So, you know, just make sure that you've got the right person as well. Yeah, no, good point. So that was the first major mistake. And the second one is uh, has to do with, with the targeting. So if you're a, a, a local tradie that works within a certain area, so uh, just to take a personal example um, for, for both Matt and myself. So if you're a tradie that operates on the northern beaches of Sydney, well, it doesn't make sense at all to have your ads showing up in Melbourne or in Brisbane or, you know, or in another state because we can only service the local area. So it's really important that when you're advertising, you do hone in on where you can actually service and also who you're going to be servicing. I've got to say, that is something I see so common. Like I'll jump on, on Google and I'll see ads for people that are advertising you know, in Sydney through a Sydney IP address advertising services out of Brisbane or something like that. It's just a poorly run campaign. These are the kind of things that are super, super easy to bugger up when you're setting up, your, <laughs> setting up a campaign. <laughs> and if you don't know what you're doing, this is why we always use experts to do this stuff. You know, There's so many people out there that would have done, tried to do their own AdWords and do all this stuff before. There's so many little things and so many little intricate things that you can apply to a campaign which reduce that risk. Targeting is one of them. And then there's also the whole, there's a whole negative aspect too, like with the negative keywords and that kind of thing, which basically allows you to put keywords in place that you won't show up for. So if you're running a campaign in, you know, in Sydney, for, well, I can tell you actually, as an example, we went back in, back when I was plumbing, we used to do a service called, called patch repair in pipe relining. And we had a campaign running, which was for patch repair. That sounds good because that's what the product's called. But we were getting clicks for people that were looking for clothing patches. So we decided. <laughs> so these are things that you may, like when you're a rookie like I was, you didn't really understand. But obviously, we had to apply that as a negative keyword. So when people were actually looking for that, they would not get sent to us. Yeah, it's two diff very different services. <laughs> patches and clothing patches. <laughs> anyway, carry on. Cool. So, so now that we know the two biggest mistakes that we generally see with people just starting out or not using the right professionals, why don't we go through and I'll break down the three key pillars that they actually need to do to see uh, to build a successful campaign. Yep, sounds good. So, yep. so, so the first one is you know, people tend to dive straight into the ads and start to go, look, so how do I get my ad up online? You know, what platform should I be on? But the number one thing that we, or the number one reason why we see campaigns not working is because people don't have a good offer. Now, when I talk about offer, I don't just mean, you know, are you running 50% off this month? Are you running discounts? That isn't necessarily a good offer at all. But what an offer can be is you've, you've got a service, say, say you're in plumbing, for example. Well, on the flip side of that, what kind of knowledge can you offer the people who are looking at your ads or who might be looking at your service that's relevant for them? Yep. So um, just to take, for example, if you're looking at hot water systems, so the offer that you're giving to people is your expertise in choosing the right hot water system for them. So you know, this is an experience that I've just recently gone through. And man, I had no idea how complicated hot water system can get, right? <laughs> so instead of you know, an ad that says, hey, you know, we do hot water systems, contact us, which is, by the way, what every single person in the market's doing. What if your ad or your offer was, hey, based on where you are and what your house is and how many people you've got living there, Here's a couple of options for you to think about, and here's some information. You could be looking at a tank storage systems. You could be looking at instant hot water systems. Here's a little bit of information as an offer to help you make up your mind. Yeah, right. Right. So it's not necessarily just, hey, here's, here's who I am. Here's what I do. Look at me. Use me, because that's what everyone else is saying. But have a real offer that provides some kind of value and helps you stand out. Awesome. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, that's fantastic. I think Sweet. that's pretty common as well, isn't it? Just the generic offers or the generic call to actions, you know, like so, so much, so much more, like from a conversion point of view, you get so much better results if you can get a bit creative in that space and really 
The other thing I suppose, which you're probably going to dive into in a minute, is when you are creative like that and you've given people options that are specific to them, you can actually almost even find those exact people through <laughs> through Facebook <laughs> yeah. ads. You can find somebody that lives on the northern beaches of Sydney or you can find someone that lives in your suburb that has three children and likes red balloons and drives a pink car. Like all that stuff is available through Facebook marketing. You know, it's ridiculous the, the level of analytics you can get to. It is creepily specific. <laughs> so it gets to the point where Facebook, so depending on what people do on Facebook, now we, we're just diving a little bit deeper and going on the segue. So I'm going to bring it back, but I'm just going to make one quick point is, you know, Facebook advertising has gotten so detailed that for some people, it actually knows what income they, they've got and also what their, their house is worth and what assets they have. So, you, can, you know, if you're a tree that, that does high-end um, home builds or high-end high end renovations, you really can get super targeted in who you show your ads to. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty amazing, isn't it? We, I'm actually getting married in a couple of weeks. and um, Congratulations, by the way. <laughs> thank you, yeah. And I deliberately haven't changed my Facebook profile to engage because <laughs> I know as soon as I do, <laughs> I immediately will start seeing ads for babies and you know home loans and all this kind of stuff. It's 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 crazy <laughs> how targeted the marketing can be. We just get a whole torrent of ads thrown at you. About yeah, exactly. Weeks. Yeah. Anyway. Cool. So look, that that was point one, which is the offer. So you know, get a little, little bit creative. Think about if you were trying to buy your services, what kind of information would really help you along the buying journey? And that's what you can have as your offer. So once you've got your offer, that's the first pillar. The second pillar is the ad itself. So again, a lot of uh, generic ads are, you know, we've got 12 years of experience in this industry. We, we do free call outs and we guarantee the quote. Well, I've actually found that if you've got a good offer and if you've got a good ad talking about the good offer, the pricing doesn't actually matter. So sometimes you can even be premium priced, but you've given so much value through the offer that people are just happy to pay you more because they think you're an expert. Well, <laughs> And isn't this the thing? So we so try and encourage, and the listeners out there will certainly know from the ear bashings that I've been giving them in previous <laughs> episodes, but it just pays so many dividends if you can if you can like niche yourself in a certain area of your industry because it does give you the option there to become the expert in that field and it does enable you to charge more for being the expert. It's like the orthopedic surgeon, right? Like the orthopedic surgeon can charge you more because he's a specialist in knees or he's a specialist in shoulders or, or he's a specialist in ankles or whatever it is. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So with, with that itself, what we might do is I wanted to talk more generally around that because you know constructing an ad, constructing an offer, that might even be an entire series just in and of itself. Okay. But that's such a detailed topic. But what, what I will say is in, in your ad itself, you know, people the, the attention span that people have nowadays, especially if they're online, it's actually, you know, less than eight seconds. So less than that of a goldfish, right? So your ad has to be very specific. It's got to talk about who, who you're looking to help, how you can actually help them. And by how, I, I don't mean we, we can get your plumbing fixed. What I mean is you talk about things like, what would it be like if, you, you, if your family never ran out of hot water again? Or what would it be like this summer if you could enjoy the summer out on your brand new pergola or, or, or your deck? So talk about some of the real benefits or some of the emotional benefits that people have um, and associate that to your offer. Yep, I like it. Sell the benefits, not the exactly. process. Yep, exactly. Sell the benefits to the specific person you're targeting. So true. No one cares that you've got a high-pressure water jet up. People care that you have you know, you can stop their sewer from surcharging in their bathroom or their laundry. That's the benefit. People, yeah. I think as, as tradies, we get really hung up on, on the process and trying to sell sell the process as opposed to selling the outcome. You know, you're yeah, not selling a exactly. deck, you're selling an outdoor living entertainment area for you and your friends come this summer. Yeah, exactly. You know, so if you're not selling the process of, you know, we'll come in and clean your deck, we'll sand it and we'll get it polished again. What you're actually selling is imagine having a barbecue out on the deck with the kids running around and you and your mates having beers. That's what you're actually selling. Yeah. So now we've got the offer and now we understand a little bit more about the ad. Well, the third step is, what are they going to do once they actually click on the ad? So what is your sales and your follow-up process? Now, we talked in the last episode a lot around the landing page and how that's a specific page that when people come into it, they get one of two choices, which is to, to give you their details and get information from you or to bounce off the page. So typically what we say is if you're running a campaign, a landing page is a must-have. And if you're investing in getting people to look at your service, to look at your ad, well, you want to maximize the results that you can get from that investment. 
And just again, for the listeners that may have missed previous episode, a landing page is basically a, a page that talks specifically about one product. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. The landing page is a page that only talks about one product, which is the product that you mentioned in your ad and the offer for that product. Yeah, so if you've got all three of those, you know, what we say is with the follow-up process, we found that sometimes even though someone's happy to give us their details on the landing page, that might not be enough to push them across the line. So we also like to have an automated lead generation system, which is just fancy talk by um, of, uh, a fancy way of saying, we send emails out in an automated way to people who have come through to kind of give them even more information and to give more value back to them so that you know it gets them ready to talk to us. So one of the big things we've spoken about in many of our episodes previously is building an asset into your business in the form of a database. Now, obviously, in the instance where basically there's a lot of misconception out there in the marketplace where a lot of, a lot of trade-based organizations are under the impression that, well, I am my business and it's, I don't have anything that could ever be sold because without me, it's nothing, which I might add is 100% true, except for two things. If you have systems and processes in place that allow the business to run without you, then that is acquirable. And if you have a database, that is also acquirable. So what you're talking about there, basically, through that lead capture um, mechanism is basically a way that they can build a database. Yeah, exactly right. And by the way, so some people might be, some tradies or some listeners might even be thinking, well, how much is an email really worth? Well, there was a company that I work with in the US and they were a pool cleaning company. They built from nothing. So just one man going out there and physically doing the work. But the guy was really smart and you know, he had processes in place to capture leads and so every customer he had, he'd add them to the email list and he'd talk to them you know, every so often, every two weeks or a month or something like that. And in a very quick period of time, because he kept talking to the people, they kept referring working to him and he grew to a, a decent size. So what happened was his wife unfortunately got sick a few years down the track. I think it was three years from, from starting from scratch. And so he needed, um, well, I mean, you know, so the healthcare system in the US is a little bit messed up, but I'm not going to get into that at the moment, but he needed to cash out really quickly. And so what he actually did was he put his business on the market and he got seven, eight figure offers just because of the asset that he had, because he had systemized his processes to the point where he didn't need to be working in there. And also because he had such a big database of people referring everyone else in there. So it it might not sound like much having an an email on on a list, but if you have enough of those and if you you have a systemized business, well, that can actually sell for a lot of money. Yep, that's exactly right. Oh, I'm glad that came from somebody else than me for once. <laughs> Someone else giving your audience an ear bashing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. So we've got the offer, um, we've got the ad, and then we've got the sales and the follow-up process. Now, a lot of the listeners out there would be sitting there thinking, yeah, but I hate getting emails and I never check them anyway. We actually had a um, spoke to, we did a series a little while back um, with a lady called Eve, and she spoke about some pretty cool techniques she had in the way of following up of basically improving your conversions with follow-up. If any of the listeners want to go back and check that out, it's in episode 82. You'll be able to find that through the scished.com forward slash podcasts. Um, yeah, but it was really interesting to see how, how she does it because she actually incorporated text messaging, phone calls, email, and even physical gifts. Oh, so she would actually really do clever. mail out. And a lot of it was, it was pretty much all automated. It was pretty clever. Anyway, episode 82, go check it out. I digress. Carry on. <laughs> no, that, that 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 is actually such a such a good point, and you know, I'm look, I'm, I'm going to have to go back and listen to that one as well. So <laughs> the pest, uh, so just another example of that, the pest control company that I use, and I've used them once, and they've actually been really good about this. So this year they sent me a letter and said, hey, you know, last year we we had your pest pest control done. By the way, are you seeing more spiders around your place? Because if you are, we'd love to come out and treat it again. So you know, instead of a one off and me having to go back and click on their ad again and them having to pay for the ad again it's actually becoming a lot cheaper for them to market to me because they've got my details. Yeah, and this is something I think that so many trade, you know what, so, it's so relevant to so many different trade organizations out there. If you're a plumber and you've been out and you've cleared someone block drain, why not set a six-month auto-responding email which goes out to that person saying, hey, we're out of your job. Hey, Sally, hey, Tim, whatever. We're out of your house six months ago to clear your block drain. Chances are six months down the track, there's probably some tree roots growing there. So if you don't want it to back up again and overflow into your bathroom, it's probably a good, good um, idea that we come out and put the camera down and make sure there's nothing there. I mean, that's just pretty harmless. You're basically you're giving that customer a solution that can save them so much grief. But the reality is, are you doing it? Probably not. Or if you're a builder, maybe you want to build a deck 
And then in 12 months time, you know, you could send out a, a reminder to that, that homeowner telling them to, you know, it's time to retreat the deck or re-oil it or re-varnish or whatever. You know, there's so many little things you could do there. Yep, spot on. Exactly right. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So look, just, just as a bit of a recap, what we discussed was there's, there's two big no-nos that you, that you definitely want to take care of before you start running campaigns, which is controlling your budget and controlling where your ad can turn. And then we went through and looked at, you know, what kind of offers that we can actually make to the marketplace, what ads or how are we going to write the ads to talk to the offer and what happens after, after we, we click on the ads. And we talked about landing pages and also follow-up processes. Gold. All right. That is pretty much a wrap. We're going to come back for the third and final episode for the How to Grow Your Business with Online Marketing series with Will Wang. So stay tuned for that one, listeners. Thank you for listening to another episode of Toolbox Talks. If you're liking what you hear, then you can head across to the siteshed.com where you can join our community by signing up to our Toolbox Talks. Uh, You'll get sent a weekly notification, which is basically a highlight of everything that we've spoken about during that week, along with any other industry news that may be relevant or specific to the trades. If you're enjoying the show, you can head across to iTunes, Stitcher, or SoundCloud, where you can leave us a review. Uh, That would be fantastic, and all the reviews get read out in the show. Uh, Likewise, if you have any friends or colleagues that you think would benefit from the show and the, the episodes that we create, then please go ahead and share it with them.